On December 2, 2011, the Office of the Auditor General of British Columbia released a report entitled, Summary Report, Results of Completed Projects. To read the full report and other supplementary documents, please visit our website at www.bcauditor.com. The following presentation provides an overview of the report. The Auditor General, John Doyle, is the Independent Auditor of the Legislative Assembly of British Columbia. Mr. Doyle reports to the Legislative Assembly, not to the Government of the Day. The Office of the Auditor General conducts both financial audits and performance, or Valley for Money, audits. The Office undertakes a number of audits, reviews, or examinations each year that do not result in traditional public reports. For reasons unique to each piece of work, these projects do not need to be the subject of a traditional report to be beneficial. However, to be accountable for this work, we summarize the most important findings and recommendations from these performance audits and reviews in this annual public summary report. Publishing this report also allows the Auditor General to recognize the good work being done in government, which may not otherwise be introduced into the public realm. This is the second summary report issued by the Office of the Auditor General. It includes summaries of six audit projects as shown in this slide. The first of the six reports in this summary is titled, Organizational Costing of Fee-Based Goods and Services. The provincial government generates revenue from fees and licenses paid by British Columbians across a wide range of sectors. For example, fees are charged for birth, death, and marriage certificates, ambulance fees, university and college tuition, fishing licenses and park use permits, driver's licenses, and court services. Fee collection revenue totaled more than $4 billion annually in each of the last three years. In 2010 and 2011, fees accounted for 11% of all provincial revenue. The health and education sectors account for almost 80% of all revenues earned from fees and licenses for the year ended March 31st, 2011. The purpose of our audit was to determine if the province is using appropriate costing models to make fully informed decisions in setting fees for goods and services. We also looked at whether the models in use are being consistently applied and if the fee setting process is transparent to all stakeholders. We found that the current guidance for setting fees is extensive, but can be improved in a number of ways. In particular, it could be more prescriptive to ensure that costs are calculated consistently across government and that all government service users are paying fees based on a common foundation. Our audit also found a lack of ongoing monitoring. Fees can become outdated over time as costs change. Government needs to ensure that they are not unintentionally subsidizing specific activities and thereby reducing resources available to other public services or unintentionally overcharging and inadvertently taxing the users of that good or service. Finally, we found that the fee setting process and the actual costs underlying the fees collected by government agencies are not as transparent as they could be. The fee setting process must be effectively managed and transparent so that stakeholders can understand how fees are calculated and can hold government to account for its fee setting decisions. Our office will continue to follow developments in this area. The second piece of work in this report is regarding the Family Maintenance Enforcement Program. Every year, thousands of children and parents rely on the Family Maintenance Enforcement Program, or the FMEP, to ensure ongoing reliable payments of court-ordered child and or spousal support payments. On average, recipients receive $400 per month. Sometimes, however, payers default on their payments. In these instances, the FMEP is responsible for trying to collect default payments on behalf of recipients. Since the inception of FMEP, administration of the program has been contracted out to Themis Program Management and Consulting Limited. The Maintenance Enforcement and Locate Services branch of the Ministry of Attorney General manages the contract with Themis. Overall, our audit found the FMEP contract and performance management to not be effective. 
The ministry needs to establish an effective accountability framework and improve the FMEP's performance by defining goals and objectives for the FMEP in business plans, contracts, and performance reports, establishing contractually binding performance measures and targets, and improving the usefulness and accuracy of management reports to support performance management. The ministry needs to improve contract management practices by approving all contract and subcontract arrangements, monitoring contract performance and keeping records, reviewing management fees and operating expenses that are paid under the contract and subcontract supporting the FMEP to ensure that value for money is achieved and demonstrated, and ensuring that key decisions and discussions impacting the complex contracting arrangements for the FMEP are adequately documented. Our office's work to date represents the first phase of an audit of the Family Maintenance Enforcement Program. Looking ahead, we may conduct a second phase which will focus on the effectiveness of the design and delivery of the FMEP in serving the needs of those families and individuals who rely on the program for their well-being. Report 3, Management of Student Loans. The student loan portfolio represents a significant investment by the province. As of March 31, 2011, the outstanding balance was $991 million. When we began our audit of the student loan program, there were two distinct student loans, a federal and a provincial loan. The portfolio was managed by two ministries, Advanced Education and Finance. There was also several service providers involved in various aspects of managing student loans. We set out to examine whether the student loan program was being managed to ensure eligible students were receiving equitable and consistent access to funding and whether there are necessary controls were in place to manage the portfolio. During the course of the audit, the province and federal governments made a number of changes to the student loan program. Through administrative integration, they have moved from a two loan to a one loan program. With these changes underway, the Office of the Auditor General determined that it would be best not to issue a public report as planned. Many of the likely findings and recommendations would have little rev relevance under the new program. The audit work was summarized and provided to management for consideration. As the province moves through the implementation of its integration plan, our office will continue to monitor the student loan portfolio. Report number four, managing for results post-secondary accountability framework audit. The Ministry of Advanced Education's accountability framework exists to manage for a result in a number of strategic areas. Capacity, to ensure the PSE system is of sufficient size to meet the province's needs. Access, to provide equitable, affordable access to post-secondary education. Quality, to ensure the provision of quality education. Relevance, to provide the appropriate scope and breadth of post-secondary education. We examined whether the ministry is focused on managing for results, whether it uses performance information to monitor and make adjustments to ensure results that matter are achieved, and whether it is accountable for results. We concluded that the ministry is not using the accountability framework effectively to influence performance and achieve results. We found that the Ministry Service Plan has become increasingly disconnected from the accountability framework. Our recommendations to the Ministry focus on the need to improve strategic linkages, institute better mechanisms to manage for results, and strengthen performance reporting. Looking ahead, we will follow up on our recommendations and request that the Ministry provide us with an update on the progress it has made in addressing the concerns we outlined in our management letter to them. The second to last report in this summary report is Accountability for Special Education Services. Approximately 60,000 students, or 10% of all students, in the public education system are identified as having special needs. The total budgeted spending on special education programs and services for 2009 and 2010 was almost $700 million. Responsibility for providing appropriate education services for students is shared between the Ministry of Education, Boards of Education, and individual schools. 
Our audit focused on school district accountability for the effectiveness of special education services. We examined practices in three school districts. We observed a high level of commitment and effort given to special education by all three school districts, as well as a strong collaboration among district-based and school-based staff. With respect to planning and resourcing special education, we found a number of areas of strength. School districts have clearly defined roles and responsibilities, and all districts promote the use of good practice and evidence-based resources. We also noted a number of challenges, which are outlined in the full report available on our website. Nonetheless, we found that all three school districts are committed to continuously improving special education services, and all three have implemented changes to improve the quality of special education services. The final piece of work in the summary report is on wireless networking security. Wireless technologies continue to increase in popularity due to their flexibility and low cost of implementation. However, Wi-Fi technology has the same risks as wired networking. Inadequate wireless network security can lead to sensitive data, such as user IDs and passwords, being captured intentionally by those with malicious intent or even unintentionally. As well, inadequate wireless network security can create a backdoor into corporate networks. This is the office's third audit report on the topic of wireless security. For this audit, we selected two post-secondary institutions, the University of British Columbia in Vancouver and Camosun College in Victoria. We found that all wireless access devices installed by both UBC and Camosun College are well secured. However, both institutions need to improve their policies and standards in wireless networking. There is also room for improvement in their management and monitoring of wireless operating activities. In addition, Camosun College needs to strengthen its password security management and the roles and responsibilities of key IT personnel. That concludes our summary of this report. To read this report and our other publications, or for more information about our office, please visit our website at www bcauditor.com. The Auditor General encourages your feedback on this report as well as your suggestions for further audits. We look forward to hearing from you.